This is the You Winning Life Podcast, your number one source for mastering a positive existence. Each episode, we'll be interviewing exceptional people, giving you empowering insights, and guiding you to extraordinary outcomes. Learn from specialists in the worlds of integrative and natural wellness, spirituality, psychology, and entrepreneurship. So you too can be winning life. Now, here's your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, certified neuro emotional technique practitioner and certified entrepreneur coach jason wasser welcome back to the winning life podcast this is my second to last interview of this amazing weekend i've been at go abundance here in miami florida thank goodness it's only a 30 minute drive without traffic so uh it's been a lovely weekend hanging out with this community and one of my uh for conversations when i got here i was wandering around the evening not even noticing that there was vendors at this event and one of the vendors is also part of the program because it was founded by one of the sponsors of go abundance and i'm sitting with susan jacobson she is the operations director of one life fully lived which is a nonprofit organization which we're going to get more into and all the mind-blowing insane stuff that really after seeing what they're doing and what you'll hear about what they do i believe is such an essential that everybody should have this information but you're targeting very specific populations so Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And yeah. Uh, had a great had a great time. I'm so glad. So, I mean, besides the bio, you guys will all see it on there. But, you know, you bring all this stuff to the table. And there's so many different ways we can start. But just how did you end up here doing this, the connection to this organization? How did you decide to go into nonprofit work? What about your life brought you to that as a mission and passion for you? You know, I think really serving others and helping people develop to their full potential is something that I started very young. I mean, I can remember being four and five years old and having just learned to read and then helping everybody around me, all my friends, learn to read. And so the fulfillment I got when that light went on, I knew that I was working where I should be. You know, I, I helping people learn a skill, do something new find joy in themselves because of their sense of accomplishment, you know, was equally rewarding to me. And so that, you know, led me on a journey that, oh, I want to be a teacher. I also want to be a singer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a singer. Um, and, and kind of as I headed down that place, I always found myself in roles of teaching. One of the things that I did um, as I uh, entered, you know, professional life or as I was a grown up, um, I was working in advertising actually at this time, and this was like in the um, late 80s, you know, and, and so it was like hardcore, you know, advertising and, and um, that sort of thing. And then also was looking at trying to, you know, be a singer. And so also a very uh, run fast and hard <laughs> life, and maybe females uh, had to do more than what they were willing to do, which I was yeah. not. And so I I've walked from a singing stories. career. Yeah, walked from a singing career um, because I was not about to uh, go into some other room with someone mm -hmm. I didn't want to do something with. Um, but at the same time, I was coaching sports. And I found that, he, again, there I was teaching, helping people develop to their full potential. The sport was the vehicle and winning is the byproduct mm. of hard work, yeah. goal setting, risk taking, overcoming fear, perseverance, all of those things that create that opportunity for you to live your very best life. Yeah. They were skills that you needed that were life skills. And so conversations I would have with parents in sport about, oh, they wanted a collegiate scholarship, they want this. You know, I had a I would have a meeting with our parents at the beginning of each season and say, here you Hey, welcome. We're really happy to have you here. I'm super excited to go on this journey with your children. But if you're looking for a college scholarship, there's the door. Nice. And literally, I, there were families that they opted out. I never sure. had to kick a family out of a program. But there were families that opted out, hopefully early in that relationship. Yeah. But it was very much because, I, like I said, winning's a byproduct of the hard work and perseverance and the things that you do to get there mm -hmm. that have it happen. And I'm focused on that. I'm focused on that. Not how many medals you win. You know, I'm really focused on how they grow. So that was something that I loved. When So when I was working that those other, you know, really jobs, mm -hmm. and actually as I began to create, you know, build businesses and open businesses, you know, and open my own gym and things like that along the way, um, those were the things that served us well, you know. But I found myself always going back at that time to sport 
you know, and coaching. And no matter what I was doing, I was always coaching kids. I was always involved in sport. So that was the vehicle that I used. And then that led me to doing more and more nonprofit work. I actually, I was um, consulting. I was at the, I was a team leader for the London 2012 Olympics. I was with a group of other sport administrators, um, other team leaders, and we were talking about our sports and we all faced the same troubles. And I thought, you know, nobody helps us really understand all of the different things. Sports are big, little, you know, but you all had the same problems. So I started a nonprofit at that time, my own nonprofit that was um, going to go and help, and which I did, you know, I, I helped uh, coaches, leaders, and actually governing bodies expand their programs. So instead of coaching 100 athletes, I started coaching coaches, and I started coaching leaders, and so as you begin to scale, so now I'm affecting like a whole country of athletes instead of just three kids I'm coaching or whatever. Um, and at that time, that's when I met our founder, Tim Rode. Um, and yeah, he was one of the three founding men- members of the GoBundance tribe. Mm-hmm. But before there was GoBundance, there was One Life Fully Lived. And so Tim and I met um, living in the small town. Tim grew up in, my husband grew up in that same town in Northern California. I had this nonprofit that I was doing some local sports programming with, um, trying to kind of create a sustainable model in that community because that was another thing I learned about. It can't all be based on you Mm -hmm. and so you've got to be able to backfill and have succession plan and make sure that the organization is truly needed and is supported in order to keep going and then also having this globe lives flying around the world you know consulting and so started helping Tim and One Life Fully Lived and looking at what his objectives were incredibly visionary guy with great um, ideas and content and how he was trying to reach people but needed a plan one of the (laughs) biggest most heartfelt kind but so much energy, so many amazing ideas. And so he refers to me affectionately as being the adult in the room. (laughs) So we took all of that and then created some programs. Yeah, that's amazing. So it sounds like, right, as I'm listening to this story, it's kind of like there was this charmed life that you were doing. You had this music and businesses and working with all these amazing athletes and creating incredible stuff. But there was some grit and adversity that led you. Yeah, to it, that. it didn't, you know, and so my life has kind of been like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I talked about being a little girl and wanting to teach and help other people. So I had that ability to see that, you know, not everybody had everything they needed to be yeah. successful. And so how could I help those people? And I learned early on um, that things aren't fair for everyone. My very best friend in the third grade was a black girl and I couldn't go play in her neighborhood and she couldn't come play in mine. This was in Las Vegas during the times of riots and, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the stuff that was going on back then. And so I knew things weren't always the same for everybody and wondered, you know, what could I do to help that? But I was moving along and then tragedy hit at 11 years old. So my mom grew up in a very poor, poor environment, a block off eight mile in Detroit. Um, Her family slept next to the freezer for the heat that comes out in the winter when it discharges, you know, the freezer lets off heat when it discharges, and so they couldn't afford heat in their house. My dad came from a very affluent neighborhood they met in church. Um, So I lived with kind of her fears of scarcity Mm -hmm. and his mind of abundance. Um, But then he died at 11. My mom only knew now everything would change, and what she had before would be her life again. And she went through a very difficult time. And and that evening, I almost assumed the role of the adult while she grieved for the next several years um, in that circumstance. And so I realized right then, if I didn't take care of us, nobody would. If I didn't take these steps to make sure we were okay, nobody would. And so going from this, this very protected, you know, perfect life to some pretty scary times. I mean, she had a good job, blue collar job, you know, for the phone company. Um, so she was going to work and, you know, things yeah. were happening. But I, as teenagers do, you know, I was entering into my preteens, teen years, you know, so I was living life full. I was the grown up in the house. I did whatever the heck I wanted and didn't always make the best choices. Um, and so from that, you know, found myself, uh, wanted to move out and got married at 17, ended up in an abusive situation, fled that homeless on the beach in LA because I thought I'd pursue that singing career Um, worked a whole bunch of jobs in order to get you know get into an apartment that I could afford to pay and move to the next level and so yeah I mean I've had a roller coaster of hey things are safe oh hey things aren't so much hey things are good and actually isn't that the life of small business 
right? Isn't is that, that what you cycle? do? For sure. Yeah, it is. And so resilience, you know, like you said, grit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, and that ties directly into the nonprofit, which is that life cycle of the populations that this nonprofit is serving is incredible. So let's just start off with there. What are the populations that this is serving? And then we'll go into what you guys are doing. And, and for those of you who can't hear, I mean, you're not seeing this, but there's a, an incredible, incredible book. I, I don't want to call it a journal because it is a journal, but it's a, but it's, 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 a, it's a handbook. Activity book. Yeah, it's handbook. a handbook. Yeah, and um, as I went through it the other night and just seeing what's in here, uh, I think my first comment to you is like this, th- right? It is amazing for the population because when you go to these masterminds or these boot camp conferences, you'll get stuff like this. And or if you watch, you know, certain, you know, you buy a $99 program, you'll get some type of thing. But this is going to a very specific population that would never walk into or couldn't ha- might not even ever have access right, to this right. type of community. Right, right. And so, you know, I think about that coming out of, you know, what if when I fled the abusive situation, I ended up in um, a transitional setting and I didn't have to go be homeless. I didn't, cause I didn't, you know, there actually, there weren't lots of resources available, you know, at that point anyway, for those circumstances. But what if I'd ended up in a place that was providing some supportive housing and they had this program here that helped people create a roadmap for their lives. And so, you know, yeah, One Life Fully Lives, a nonprofit that helps people create a roadmap to dream, plan and live their best lives. And we use two things, what we call the fulfillment triangle. And so it's where your passion, what you love to do, meets a talent, what you're good at. And there's demand for that. And how do you, that's where you find fulfillment is when you put those things together, whether that's at work, in your relationships, in charitable giving, you know, what, how do you align there? And then there's what we call the core four. And so these are the four pillars that create that holistic approach to living a full life, but having this systematic you know, program that you can follow. And in program is not the right word. It's like, it's just universal truths. This is information that's been out there. We just put it together in a very easily digestible manner. Um, Vision. Mm -hmm. So if I knew I couldn't fail, what would I love to do? What do I want my life to look like? One of our roadmap certified guides says, you live until the last person speaks your name. Mm -hmm. So what is that? You know, when you've left the earth, you're, still here as long as people are talking about you what are they saying what do you want that to be what do you want to be you know your legacy it is but that's not something when we work with vulnerable population they even think about because that could be tomorrow right so the next thing then after that so if you knew you couldn't fail well they well what did your four-year-old self say you wanted to be with what was the fearlessness can you answer that right now maybe not that thing but you know just if there were no barriers in the way if all the challenge you face today aren't present what would you love to do? And then the next question is around the finances. So how are you going to how are you going to fund this amazing dream you were born to live? And then relationships, who's going to be with you on your journey? What about you? You know, how well do you know you? Who are the five that are the playing the most influence in your life and where can you find mentors to help you get to where you want to go? And then the last one's wellness. Will I be healthy enough in my mind, body and spirit to get there? And enjoy it for years and years to come once I'm there. So those that, you know, that's the core four, what we call the core four. It's evergreen. Mm -hmm. It applies to people listening today. You know, I have conversations. um, Sometimes we do leadership events that are with the leaders of nonprofits. So here in Miami this week, we've been doing what we call a city blitz. A city blitz is where we come to a town. We serve like six organizations. Sometimes we serve their clients directly, the people that they're serving directly. Sometimes we serve the leaders of those organizations, or in this case, we went to um, an event that was a monthly leadership training. So we had 35 leaders of local Miami organizations serving those in the most vulnerable situations. Yeah. And and they go through this, and, and we do that because in the nonprofit, sometimes you don't put your oxygen mask on first. Mm-hmm. You're serving so much, you let yourself, that was me. I wasn't worried about money. I just wanted to help people. But if by that, I wasn't able to, I was always stressed myself, right? I'm hustling, I'm hustling. Um, In my businesses, I was just buying a job. It was no different than working for somebody else, but often without the benefits, right? Um, So it wasn't until I came along and met Tim and started going through the content and helping him create this this system or or this curriculum 
that I was like, oh, crap, I'm not doing that. Oh, crap, I'm not doing that. And guess what? I started doing it. Hey, hey. Things got know, better. Things are better. Yeah. And I realized that m- how I showed up was so much stronger because now, you know, we think of Matlo- Maslow's theory of hierarchy, mm-hmm. right? Like that basic survival. I mean, I was maybe sometimes barely surviving, other times doing a little better from that, but I certainly wasn't moving up into those self-actualization yeah. levels, right? So if we think about that, you know, and where can we go? So it is very evergreen, but our goal is to work with the people that don't have this information and access in their lives. They can't even look around because, you know, like some of the work we do in South Philly, right? We've got an amazing guy, Will Little. If you guys look him up, you know, the work that we're doing with with where Will comes from. You know, Will, Will was a fatherless home, growing up with his mom and his sisters. He needed to help people get by he needed to help the family live so he went out he started hustling that was the only place he could see to make money he started caught up in gangs and the drug trade went bad ended up in a shootout a guy died will shot back and guy died he ended up in prison in prison he decided he wanted to make a change that's as he learned that he had a kid on the way wanted to make a change didn't want to go back to what he mm-hmm. had and so he started working on himself first but yeah. after time after he came out he came across tim tim was beginning to share the one life roadmap content we wasn't called a roadmap yet it was just these universal truths that he used because success leaves clues and it was around these areas and and will was already a, an activist in his community but now same thing he put that oxygen mask on, and now he's an author. He's been featured in films. Mm. He's um, a life coach. He's got an amazing um, Internet community that um, are sharing some of the issues that face them. So so when we go into these communities where all people have seen is the violence on mm-hmm. the street, you know, we were um, in Orlando a few weeks ago um, in the Paramore neighborhood, yeah. and I'm with a group of amazing young men Um, between the ages of, I think they were 14 and 19. And when we were working with them and talking to me, if you knew you couldn't fail, what's the first thing you want? I just want to have a house where I don't hear a gunfire at night, right? So so when we talk about what that is in those communities, some of the people that we work with are maybe, um, we say we serve people at-risk youth and those emerging from hardship. Right. So emerging from hardship. So you've been struggling with addiction, and you're in recovery. You've made a choice that the life you were living isn't the life you want to be. You're sick and tired. You know, what is that? Sick and tired of being sick and tired, tired. tired. Yeah. right? Um, you just got out of jail or your will, you're in, you know, you're in jail. You know, you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. What do I do next? You just escaped domestic violence. Yeah. You know, what do you want to do next? So that's a lot of the, you know, you could, you could just think of any it's generational poverty, people that have just lived in the grips of a system for so long and they don't know anything else that's the group that we aim to serve to give them access tools knowledge skills information Mm. in a very easy way to understand with tools that they can plug in right now and see a change yeah my first thought is how much we take for granted so if we're sitting here and we're listening to this if you're listening to this episode your life is going pretty well there might be shit that's going down, but your life on the whole is probably going pretty well if you have enough free time to be listening to a podcast or you've decided that you want to make your life better and somehow you stumbled upon my podcast and, and you're finding that there's some value in here. And like, I really do want to start the next part of our conversation just taking a moment of gratitude for these journeys, right? My own crap in my life got me to be a therapist and you know, it just was chaotic and messy and gross and... Uh, then the next stage was moving into this entrepreneurship world and starting to be able to see myself in these levels. I mean, it's all developmental stages, but knowing that none of that would have, it all happened the way it needed to happen for some level and some reason. But like I, I keep going, my, my eyes keep scanning back to this book as it's sitting here, the roadmap journal. And I just keep like, I don't know why something organic is like, all right, so what's the next version that just needs to be sold everywhere and this needs to be the basic one of the books that needs to be on everybody's shelves. I mean, it's it's so incredible, and this in and of itself is a treasure of information. And I'm not just saying it because I I've been in other curriculums, I've been in other community programs, and a lot, like you said, they're all evergreen, they're all somewhere. But to have it simple, to have it compiled, to have it actually look nice, 
I like the Starbucks colors. It's a very like oh, it looks like the Starbucks green. logo. Yeah, we try right? to keep that very natural. <laughs> very uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's uh, when I so Ryan Serhant was here mm-hmm. on on uh, Friday night, and I grabbed him between him finishing signing on his walk to the elevator. And I'm like, huh, you made a you made a therapist joke, and then you said everybody should go to um, to do improv instead of going to therapy, which I think is super cool. Everybody should go to improv, right? But I'm like, I'm offended, Ryan. You give me three minutes of your time. Let's do comedy <laughs> right, right, and right, right, therapy right, together. Right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, as I looked up, you know, the four feet taller that he is in me, and um, I'm like, what, so what's what's your legit like? What do you do for your real self care? I mean, I know you work out, and he goes, I journal. Hmm. I try to spend a lot of time journaling, and actually, when that became my became one of my books or both my books and i know that like there's a thing about journaling and like people some people swear by it somebody like ha 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 i don't know whatever that's really going to do anything for me and some people are like yeah i would never i walk by that aisle in barnes and noble or my friend journals and like nah it's like complete waste of time like what would you say from your i mean like you said you were going through some of this stuff as you were compiling i don't want to even minimize some of that stuff like it's it's right at a certain point this is this is free information for some people that we can find it all on the internet and we're not taking opportunity to right. invest yeah and i think you know that's one thing about the one life roadmap journal and yeah mm. you can get it on amazon there's an adult edition and a student edition so if okay. you're a teen if you're a teen you know or you've got a kid that's just getting ready to graduate high school or you know it's a great tool it's the you, you like the graphics in this one we it's more yeah. playful for the kids and actually we arrange it differently kind of like so they can follow it for a year we scaffold the information oh, so it's cool. a little then the next chapter is a little deeper you know it continues mm-hmm. to kind of grow their skill level whereas in the adult version um, we divide it just by the pillars straightforward like mm-hmm. that and but there's lots of activities so there's a combination of here's some guided exercises and it's funny we start with gratitude that's the very first thing in the book is no matter what population even when we so we go around we do free two-hour roadmap experiences which is an interactive evidence-based you know experience that is um, where we call on the wisdom of the group I keep saying these are universal truths what happened is you know Tim learned all these things what we did was just to put it in to a plan that allows you to create it and follow these steps you know and so wash and repeat exactly correct exactly correct and so when we do the free two-hour experience with groups and organizations um, we guide them through and, and it's group source wisdom because mm-hmm. we want you to be the hero of your own story. We want you to realize that the information, we don't need to give it to you. It's actually around you. We want to guide you. That's why we call them roadmap guides. You know, they're not teachers, presenters, speakers, you know, any of that. Thing. We're not standing yeah. up there telling you what it is. We're actually, let's talk about it. Who do you know that was smart with their money? What did they do? This is one of the questions mm-hmm. in that two hour event, right? And so, um, but in the book, same thing. There's a series of activities. It's the same thing here. I'm cracking up yeah. because there's a reason why 98% of it, because I've had majority of the people I've interviewed have been in real estate here. Mm. And I'm like, there's a reason why 98%, because I saw they asked the question, like, how many people here are in, in, in either active or passive real estate? And it was like three people who didn't raise their hand in the room. Right. And I'm like, okay. Like, and then I've been talking on every episode with someone who's been involved in real estate. So it's that question applies, like how you asked it there. It's, it's it's like if you're listening to this episode and we ask this same question, right? If you ask me that question, what are the people that I know that are doing the most successful things in their life that have created some level of financial freedom? What are they doing? It's real estate. They are doing real estate. You know, we talk when we, when you get to the finances section, yeah. one of the first things that we ask everybody is what's financial freedom? Mm-hmm. What is that? And so people, a lot of, there's a lot of answers you get. The reality is it's when your passive income, so the money that you're not working for that's coming in while you sleep, is covering all of the expenses of your lifestyle. Yeah. You've got to make lifestyle decisions about that. What does that look like? So somebody that's got $3,000 a month in expenses and they've got $3,000 a month coming passive, they're financially free. Right. Okay? So understanding that's that. That's mind-blowing, though, because right. no it one breaks it down. It doesn't have to be $300,000 or Correct. talking about, like, yeah, I want my Lambo or I want right. my whatever. No, it's not. That's the first thing people say is, I, want to, I can buy whatever I want without thinking about it. No. You know, talk to our good friend Jeff Hoffman that you might have heard speak last night. Um, and 
it's it's take a look at him you know yeah. we it, it's not about spending or opulence or any of those things but yeah i think real estate the reason that you hear that so often is so we talk about the reality in the finances section so outside of financial that financial freedom is your goal mm -hmm. of finances um is is that you are there's three different income models okay the first one is public assistance and that's very real that's mm -hmm. there to help you if you've fallen on some hard times for your needs to be met it's there the challenge with it is and this is where generationally we're having people get stuck is that it's the most limiting one and you have no control you really have no control the next one so so we encourage people get out of that as quick as you can take the help when you need it by all means it is a real income model if you need help get help if you need help with food you're experiencing food security go to the food bank because typically most food banks you're not required to show any income so wherever you are wherever you're struggling whatever income level you're at go get food there first so you can use your money to take care of your right. other things right so well, can so we stop there for one second sure, sure, food sure. insecurity this is something that's been popping up on my radar it must have even been like once the pandemic started mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i was doing some fundraising actually our our uh, the idaho food bank i live in idaho uh -huh. and so i uh, helped them with development through the pandemic for a period of time and so i got very intimate mm -hmm. actually um, with food insecurity and certainly have experienced it myself so share away yeah, i actually well, have a little uh, knowledge in this yeah area. so it's so one of my um one of my former clients who grew up with food and in, in, in that, in that type of situation wanted to get his company involved in volunteering and he's like well i'm thinking about actually leaving my job to go work for a nonprofit. And we started discussing it and it was looking at it from a roadmap perspective of like, well, if you worked for them as a assistant director, you have to start off and you haven't done this and you have not. And what are you going to be making? And it's going to be like, oh, thirty four thousand dollars in South Florida or whatever it is. I'm like, OK, but how much are you making where you're working now? Great. Can you use that leverage to one, bring the community, bring your business, bring your company and can you get more people invested in helping this? Because we, we're still stuck in a, a way, one way to solve. Yeah, how can you amplify your impact? Absolutely. Right, versus, ampl right, versus the amplification of it. And, and a lot of people think that we have to sacrifice mm -hmm. one side in order to benefit some other side. But I think that kind of goes back to what we were you know, talking about before the interview is like, when's, right, this person wasn't yet killing it, but was so committed to helping solve a problem that was relevant to this person's life previously, they were no longer there. But it still is a massive fear, and they wanted to help solve it for other people. Where would you say like people can start if they're not yet killing it when it comes to charities and, and, and being involved and right whether it's time whether it's money like where, like how do they how do they figure that out where do they start right 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 so you know if we go from we go from that and actually you know we kind of finish out the income thing sure, sure. you know your next step is is uh, that vertical income where you're working you're trading time for dollars right mm -hmm. so so you still are limited by that because there's only so many hours yeah. a day so now what I do so even at that point where you're there uh, honestly. When we've gone in and we've helped people uh, and worked in these vulnerable populations, some of the most generous people that I've known have been in these places. There's a, a men's um, transitional living home that we worked with in Sacramento, California. And three of the guys, when we started talking about the fulfillment triangle, and, and part of what we teach is giving back. Yeah. That's part of that when we get into the wellness section, actually, when we talk about fulfillment and and that spiritual component of, of the mission and the roadmap is giving back the things that these guys are doing. You know, some of them were giving some of their money away, like to people they saw that needed help, but they were going back um, and serving in a food kitchen. You know, now they're in a transitional home, so they're being fed. Mm -hmm. They're going to the soup kitchen and volunteering there already because they knew that they need those people. I've been in the most wealthy of rooms and had people that never even thought about contribution. So when you move then from that, you know, vertical where you're trained into the horizontal, the passive, and you're talking about real estate, the beauty of real estate and why it's so simple is that it creates passive income stream right away. I mean, almost right away. I mean, just equity in your home, right, right is there. And so what do you do with that equity? How do you utilize that? So I think that's why a lot of people that you talk to, you know, get into that. And so that's the goal is to move through those income levels so that more and more of what's coming in, you're not working for, and slowly that transition goes into 100% passive, you know, yeah. which would be a great goal. And so, and this is something we talk about in those most vulnerable, because when I talk to somebody that's on public assistance and say, just hold on, 
you know, our finances, it's A, B, and C, what's coming in, what's going out. And if there's nothing left over, you need more of the A, mm. right? And so what yeah. are some legal side hustles we can do? And we'll, we'll yeah. shoot around ideas, brainstorm ideas for. So all of a sudden it makes sense to them that they're, I'm not going to work just one job. I'm not going to get stuck in just one thing. I'm not going to trade this for that. What are all the things I can do to have make that happen? Because my goal is that C. And so what I, and so they're like, wait, you're telling me. So I'm going to put this together and I'm going to do some things I love and I'm going to make some side money. I'm going to have this hustle and I'm going to, you know, I finally bought a car and I'm going to do Turo. I'm going to, I'm, I'm in an, uh, I'm in an apartment and I'm allowed to sublet. And so, you know, my kid moved out now. And so I got an open bedroom. I can have somebody I'm get like, they're starting to get it. The, yeah. the possibilities the the, because people are resourceful. Sure. They just yeah. need to know how to do it. And so we go from that. So the next thing then is I have, I, I hate it when people feel like it's an obligation. I mean, truthfully, it is. Folks, if you're out there and you've got the means, any level of means, and you're not looking around and saying, how can I make the world better than the place that I'm in right now? I'm not going to say shame on you, but come on. I'll, I'll say it. Like, shame okay, on you. Okay, you say it. Shame on So I didn't say it. You know, I love everybody, and I understand everybody will meet them where they're at, but, but I want them to come. I don't want them to feel like it's obligation. I want you to use that fulfillment triangle that I said, you know, where do you love to do? What are you good at? And where is there an opportunity that you can make a difference? And I want you to connect that to your why. What do you care about? Did you lose somebody in your life and you want to cure an illness? Yeah. Then do that. Did you experience food insecurity and you want to help that? Then do that. You know, do you look around and you see the homeless problem in your community or you see people that are struggling? You see people that are struggling from social injustice because they've never had the tools and, 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 you know, you're aware of it. Now try and understand it. And what can you do so you can? And so we call it time, treasure, or talent. Mm. So donate your time. Go volunteer. That's a great place to start because you get to look at the nonprofit and find out what's going on with them, right? And see if you're really aligned. Are they really doing what they say mm -hmm. they do? Do they walk their talk, right? Number one. One Life Fully Lived, we all have our own roadmap journey that we're on. This is something we do on a staff meeting. Amazing. And we have, you know, so this, and this completely, you right. know, and our executive director, you know, you can, you can look up Carolyn, you can go on our website, walk our, watch our docu short about three of the lives that we've impacted yeah. and see that actually the people that are with us have been through struggle themselves. So that from many different walks, which is why our founder started it. He too um, started out kind of as a square peg in a round hole and, and just didn't want people to go through what he did. And mm -hmm. so he wanted to put it together and help teach others. Um, so then you know, so talent. So what are you good at? You know, maybe it's not just volunteering, but maybe you're a great programmer. And, you know, like we're thinking there's got to be an app we can create with this journal, right? And so how can we do that? You know, because even thanks to the pandemic, I will say one of the things came out is one to run one to one tech grants. And so a lot of these organizations we partnered with, we didn't even skip a beat during the quarantine we were actually right there with doing virtual events with people in the inner city of Detroit and in Philly you know we kept going and so you know maybe you're a tech person and you can help that nonprofit with their tech maybe you have a marketing mind and you can help them raise awareness maybe you're a great fundraiser or you just got a network of people you know so your talent that's your next thing right and then of course treasure you know and and start with a one-time donation if you see that they did a good job, you know, take a look yeah. a little bit more. Are you getting uh, impact reports? You know, do you know where your money's going? Um, be sure that you know about that. Be sure they're a nonprofit. You know, you can find most of that out on their website. There's also other um, organizations out there that track, you know, right the impact right. of charities. Yeah. You can look at their financial reports. You can look at their, you know, their tax forms, that sort of thing. But then when you give... You have a couple options. You can just give unrestricted and, and trust the nonprofit because now you've done your research. You trust them to do what they need to do, which those, you know, obviously those are the gifts we like the most because let us figure out where we need it. Mm -hmm. But if you have a special thing, like we're doing these city blitzes here in Miami, we had a very generous donor that uh, donated enough money to come in and us do a city blitz and we serve a whole bunch of organizations and hopefully we're going to certify more people and expand our bandwidth here. That happens, you know, so it's restricted funds or it's specific to a program. I want you to go print 15,000 roadmap journals and give them out, which that happened to us. Uh, awesome podcaster, uh, Christopher Lockhead, um, 
did that, you know, and his follower, you're different. So he was wonderful and, and sponsored. Amazing. So we can give these to everybody for the last year and a half so far. Everybody that goes to a roadmap event gets a, gets a free journal, thanks to Christopher. But, you know, there's things you can do. Mm-hmm. And so look at it in your size. What's your scale? You know, so you're just barely getting by. Go volunteer or give 10 bucks. Right. If you love it and you're investing, they're doing great. Most every charity now has a recurring donor program where it's a monthly give. You don't even think about it. You set it up just like your Dane subscription. What are you giving Netflix? I mean, are you still giving Netflix? No, I'm not going there. But well, you're going to trade have to it out, right? All the people who that's have been what sharing I was. Passwords. That's what I was just going to say. They're all quitting right now. So, so that money, you know, yeah. either up it, and you're going to have to pay for your own Netflix out there now, or you can go to onelifefullylive.org and get in our recurring donor program. Exactly. So there you go, fourteen ninety nine a month. You know what you do for us at that? But anyway, yeah. There's well, what would they for fourteen ninety? What would they for? So let's let's make it that simple. Sure, fifteen dollars, fourteen ninety nine a sure. month. Sure. So that a month. So you would think that would be at least. Uh, that's that's a little bit uh, like our hard cost when we do bulk printing of these. Mm. You know, that's right around that neck of the woods, and so that would give us at least twelve journals in a place. But bigger, bigger so than that. Um, you know, really, that takes the lives of. So that'd be twelve. Life 20 people life changing things you know life changing role yeah. you know you're you're able to transform their life to give them the tools right then to make a difference and so those 12 what does that mean because what we found mm-hmm. out is for every person we serve they're telling at least five people around them and so now this is the oh, ripple effect wow. that we see in communities because yeah. anybody that picked up a nugget today from what we've talked about any and uh, didn't give you a ton of tips but right. we gave you a few right you're going to tell somebody else, like, I heard this on this. Hmm. So what if now you're in a community, you're somebody that doesn't have access to this, and suddenly you've shared one tip with them about financial freedom or public assistance mm-hmm. or, you know, one of the, you know, who's who are the five people that play the greatest influence in your life, you know? Are they an anchor or an engine, you know? So those kinds of nuggets that you share, and you start talking to people and you start teaching it to others around you. So it, I say 12 people, but... To be honest with you, but that's way more than twelve. It the is impact way more is than twelve. Exponential. At the end of the day, it is. It is yeah. because this is easy to use, right? Simple to use. Yeah, this is two two and a half Starbucks coffees. Exactly correct. Right there. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, yeah. So I know our time. I know they're they're kind of they're giving us their wings. This, this is this is the the, the new thing since yeah. now. First, this is like my first week back doing in person uh-huh. interviews. Uh-huh. Everything's been on Zoom. Yep. So yep. so now I have like all the wonderful, awesome. I want to first give a Staff. shout out to yep. yeah, really, as much as we're joking around, but to give a shout out to On Air Brands and to Eric Cabral. He put all this together. I'm in a room. I know you guys might have been hearing some noise over this episode and maybe a few other episodes as I'm here at this conference. Um, it's because I'm in a room with other podcasters that were brought in specifically for this conference to be support and to interview all the amazing people in this community. Um, and right, this one life fully lived and we've heard other episodes. But again, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time, a little bit of your story and your passion about this. I mean, this is when I saw it and I, I immediately ran, I wanted to connect you with my friend who's in this industry, uh, specifically yeah, in the population. Excited. So looking forward to those and other connections. Hopefully. Yeah. I like that. I mean, and yeah, anybody that's out there that mm-hmm. obviously, you know, if you want to give, you can go to one life fully It's the number one and then life fully We have an easy donate button there, but also if you have an organization you know, that you volunteer at now or there's an organization you know of in your community, please, if you email roadmap mm-hmm. at onelifefullylive.org, that allows us to start the process and connect to those people in your community. You know, or if you want to sponsor a city blitz, as I was talking about, reach out to us. You know, we'd, we'd love to come out. We'd love to find uh, corporate sponsors that want to see it come to a community and make a difference. So if you're looking for a way to make change right now, reach out to us. We'd love to partner with you. We'd That's love amazing. to bring this everywhere. Yeah. You know, we're in a lot of cities, but we'd like to be in a lot more. Mm. So. so I'll make one little ask from everybody who's listening. So if you've ever from any show, this, I don't know what number this is going to come out. It could be 129. It could be 140, whatever episode it's coming out. If you've listened to this show and any other shows and it's had any type of impact on you, please go to the website and just whatever it is, if it's $3, if it's $5, if it's $10, if it's $100, if it's $100,000, whatever it is, the, Minus the credit card processing fee that I'm sure it costs you guys. That something. I think they let you. Uh, now they ask you, would you like to cover that right. too? So go right so, ahead. Yeah, but we're fine with it either way. We appreciate button. your Click donation. That button. But <laughs> even if it's even if it's like if there's any value, I know right there's well, how many episodes it's going to be at this point. I don't care about the reviews. Just give give something and do it. You know, on 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 my behalf of that you got something out of this conversation and previous conversations. And again, awesome. Looking forward. It's to, been to beautiful our next with you. Thank with you so you. much. Of Thanks for everything. 
Thanks for listening to the You Winning Life podcast. If you are ready to minimize your personal and professional struggles and maximize your potential, we would love it if you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at You Winning Life.